The aim of the um, following videos, and there's going to be quite a few of them once they're all finished, is to um, give you a series of lessons on algebra. Um, I think there's a problem with learning algebra, and that when you first learn it, um, and I think this is necessary, you're taught a number of tricks of how to do individual little tasks, how to do this, how to do that, and you don't understand why you're doing it, you're just learning how to do those things. Um, I liken it a little bit to learning languages or going to a, on holiday to a different country and speaking the language using a phrase book. You don't understand the language, but you can ask for a loaf of bread or you can say, can say thank you. But if anyone speaks to you outside of th those few sentences you've learnt, you don't understand how to use them. Now, you're not going to understand algebra in a series of 30 videos or something, but at least you're going to begin to understand why the tricks you're being taught or the things you're being taught work. And the idea is that you can keep coming back and watching these videos and working through them until your experience increases and you get more confidence and you start to be able to speak the language of mathematics which is algebra. We're going to start off quite basic so don't, um, don't, don't watch the first video and think oh this is too easy for me because by the end of the videos the aim is to teach you everything that you need or at least show you everything that you need to get an A star at GCSE and also to help you prepare for A level if that's something you want to consider doing and it's something you should really consider doing if you're interested in mathematics. The, um, the other thing about these videos are I'm going to set you a lot of little tasks that I expect you to do so I'll ask you to pause the video, try and do the questions and then um, play the videos and I'll show you the answers. So you're going to get most benefit from them if you actually work through it with me at the time. Okay. Um, I will try and link my ideas or the ideas to numbers because numbers are we're more familiar with to try and explain why the things that we are taught work. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy them, hopefully you'll find them useful. Um, obviously leave comments if there's things that you want to cover and that I haven't covered already. Okay, so we're going to start with the basics, and um, we're all familiar with, or we should all be familiar with this symbol. It's the symbol for the number two. Okay, we're taught that quite early in our education, um, really early actually, when you're when you're learning your numbers, um, and you're also taught at the same kind of time this symbol, which is the letter A. Now this causes some confusion because students are taught that this is a number and this is a letter. And then when we come to use it in mathematics, we use letters to represent numbers. Now these could be things that vary, or they could be constants, so they don't change. They could be unknown numbers that we've got to try and work with um, value out of. So, But they are a number. So this is a number in mathematics, and this is a number in mathematics. But students see this when they first begin and think this is a letter. So when we ask um, for instance, if I wrote down 3a here, and we ignore this a up the top there, and I ask students when they first begin mathematics how many a's there are there, they will quite naturally say 1, because there's one a written down and there's a number 3. Well, actually, this means a plus a plus a. There are three A's. It's three lots of whatever A is. It's three lots of the number A. It's three lots of that unknown, or three lots of that constant. And the diff what A is is often made clear in the context of the question, or it's explained at the time in the question, or the mathematician should explain what it is. So let's not to worry to begin with whether it's a constant or an unknown. Let's just think of it as a number to begin with. Okay. Now this is similar to the idea that two plus two plus two 2 is 3 times by 2. 3 lots of 2. So this is 3 lots of A and this is 3 lots of 2. Very similar concepts. Okay. Um, now we don't write the multiply symbol between the 3 and the A because that would be 3XA um, but we do have to write the multiplication symbol between a 3 and a 2. But there are other ways of writing multiplication. You might see these sometimes, so I'm just going to show you it, show you them. 3 with a dot and 2 can be 3 times by 2, but it can also mean 3.2. So we don't often see that one until you get to quite advanced mathematics. You'll also see things in brackets. So 3, 2. Okay? So this is the same. So often you'll see brackets used to mean multiplication. Okay, and we'll come on to that a bit later on when we look at multiplying brackets. 
So let's go back to this idea that a plus a plus a is the same as three lots of a. Now if I ask again, students when they're first beginning mathematics, what is the answer to that question? They'll often say three because they think A is the first letter in the alphabet, so A must equal 1. Well, that's not true, okay? It can be true, but it's not always true. So don't try and um, assign a value to a letter dependent on the um, position of that letter in the alphabet. A can take any value, or A can be any value. Okay, so that's, that's the basics of just what's going on here. This is three lots of A. While we're here, let's just do A multiplied by A multiplied by A. Now, I just told you that we don't normally write that, okay? Because we don't, because, but I'm just showing you it now so you can see it. Now, that is the same as A to the power of three, A cubed. So it's very important that you understand the difference between three A three lots of a and a to the power of three or a cubed. One of them's adding, one of them's multiplying. So we'll come back to that later on when we look at powers and indices. Now if we're trying to add together two unknowns like a and b, we can't simplify that any further. That is the number. That is a number in its own right. That is a plus b. That's a number as well. So there's a number a plus b. a is a number, b is a number, and because they can be they're different variables, they're different unknowns, we can't do anything more with them. We can't simplify them any further. You'll sometimes see students write a b there, but that would be a times by b. So a times by b would be a b. So that you can't do any more if you're adding two unknowns. But if you're multiplying them, you can write them next to each other as AB, and we always try to. So A plus B is not the same as AB. Now if we just try to simplify some unknowns, A plus A plus B plus B, then we can work out, well, how many A's have we got in total? What are we doing here? Well, we've got an A plus an A, which is two lots of A. And we've got a b plus a b, which is two lots of b. But we've got the two lots of a added to the two lots of b, so that's 2a plus 2b. What we've done there is we've simplified that expression. Now we can go on to do something called factorizing, which we'll come to in a later video. But at the moment, that is as far as we can go with that simplification. Students want to say that's an actual number, like 6 or 7 or 8, but that, that is a number. And what you've got to get uh, um, comfortable with is that the idea that that is, a, that is a number. Depending on the value of the A and B takes, that can be a number. This is called an expression, by the way. An expression. An expression. And inside the expression, there are things called terms. So this is a term, this is a term here, and this is a term. So these are two terms in this expression. Expressions don't have an equals. If you have an equals, it's called an equation. So we've got um, expressions that we can simplify in that way. Now, if... Okay. So now I'm going to set you your first task. I'm going to write down three expressions, and I want you to tell me where the four expressions, sorry, and I want you to tell me whether um, they're the same or different. So let's start off with A plus B. Is that the same or different to B plus A? Question one. What about question two? A take away the B, is that the same as B take away A? Okay, so look at these four expressions and tell me whether these two are the same or whether these two are the same or whether they're both the same. So whether they're both equal to each other or not. Okay, so pause your video now and tell me whether they are the same or not. Okay, well hopefully you said that these two are the same as each other. Okay, and these two aren't the same as each other. And you can see that if you actually just look at simple numbers. So say if we had 2 plus 3, 
that equals 5 and 3 plus 2 also equals 5 so it doesn't matter on the order of addition that's a very important um, law of mathematics that in addition it doesn't matter which order you add you always get the same answer so if you ever see an answer with a plus b and you've given an answer at b plus a don't think it's wrong I often get students who think oh no that's wrong I, I wrote it that way round but they're actually the same answer it's the same number it's just written the other way round however a takeaway b is not the same as b takeaway a for instance if a is 3 and we take away 2 we get 1 whereas 2 take away 3 equals negative 1 so these are important that you get them the right way around. So if you give an answer of A takeaway B, but the answer in the book or in the workings is B takeaway A, you've done something wrong there, and you have to try and spot what it is you've done wrong. Okay. Now, moving on then, your second task is to come up, tell me two, with the, think of the two other operations that you know, two other things you know, well, say we've looked at adding and taking away, and think of which of those two that it doesn't matter which way round you do them and the one where it does matter which way round you do them. Okay, so pause your video now and try and work out which one is which. Okay, well, I'm guessing you've got this right. If not, don't panic. But A times by B is the same as B times by A. Again, 2 times by 3 is 6, and 3 times by 2 is 6. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply. So again, if you give an answer of AB, but the book has BA, then you have the right answer. Now, a lot of students think they've got stuff wrong when they've actually got it right, because they don't have it exactly the same as what's in the, um, their answers that the teacher gives them. And then they lose confidence. Now, the one that isn't the same, though, is divide. If you do A divided by B, so 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5, that's not the same as B divided by A, which would be 2 divided by 3, which would be 0 0.6666 and it's actually called 0 0.6 recurring it goes on forever but that's really if I just put a dot above the top you'll have to go and look at the decimals videos we've got on our site to understand that so 1.5 is not the same as 0 0.6 recurring or two-thirds now just have a look at this while, we, while we're here a divided by b is the same as saying 3 divided by 2 if a is 3 and b is 2 so another way of writing divide is writing as a fraction. Now that's the way we normally write division in algebra. We don't normally write the division symbol in the same way as we don't write the multiply symbol. A divided by B is the same as A over B or A divided by B. Now if you look at the division symbol it even looks like a fraction look. With the A in front and the B behind so the A takes the first dot and the B takes the second dot. So the division and fractions as you see them as fractions, but division is the same. These two are the same idea. So if I wanted to write 10 divided by 2, I can write that as 10 divided by 2. Okay? And they're both, that's 5. So that's the, the real basics to begin with. It doesn't matter which order you do addition and multiplication, but it does matter which order you do um, subtraction and division. Okay, A, um, unknowns in mathematics are represented by letters because they're the letters that we are, the symbols that we are familiar with in our other learning. But you could, you'll also see symbols like this, the th okay, in other sam subjects. Um, so we'll come across those later on in our, um, in our lessons, but they're just symbols, okay, because it just extends our, um, our bank of symbols that we can use and describe and discuss. Okay, so that's the real basics. Um, the next video will be on more on expressions and simplifying expressions, and then we'll be looking at um, factorizing, expanding brackets, and other things like that. Okay, so hopefully you found that um, at least 
starters and that you'll stick with it and look through and find the video that you need if this is too basic for you.